thank you very much. Uh, so the uh, main goal of this course is uh, to give uh, some um, uh, background material, uh, some basic um, periodic hot theory, and provide uh, connections uh, between uh, periodic hot theory and uh, the content of our mini courses. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, let me start with some uh, uh, general notation. So let K be a field. We fix a separable closure K bar over K. And uh, denote by GK its Galois group, so the absolute Galois group of K. And uh, uh, let me start with l adic representation. So for a mo moment, L is a fixed prime. And uh, an uh, l adic representation of GK is by definition a finite dimensional QL vector space V equipped with a continuous linear action of a group GK, which can be written as a continuous homomorphism from GK to the group of automorphisms of uh, V which uh, is isomorphic once we fix a basis of V to GLD of QL, where D is the dimension of V. So, uh, from the compactness of GK, so this map is a continuous by definition, And this uh, explains why the choice of L is important, because uh, GK is equipped with a crude topology, so it should be continuous, uh, continuous map, and uh, it defines uh, Hevel and the choice of L. And uh, uh, the first remark, which comes from the compactness of GK, is that we can always choose a a ZL lattice, say T in V, which is uh, stable under the action of uh, GK, and therefore, uh, if you choose a basis uh, appropriately, we can always consider uh, morphism from GK from, to GLD ZL. So why uh, uh, these objects are interesting is because, uh, so by many reasons, first of all they appear uh, naturally in algebraic geometry uh, as a Tate modulus of uh, abelian varieties, or more generally, as eladic et al cohomology of uh, varieties over uh, fields. And uh, uh, more, maybe more, more abstractly, uh, if uh, our aim is to study the structure of the Galois group, so the direct approach seems to be too much difficult. So many results are known uh, for a special fields K about the structure of GK, but uh, if the field is interesting, so the structure is absolutely Galois group is too much complicated. So for example, if you consider local fields, uh, so the structure of abstract structure of its absolute Galois group is known for a long time, 
but uh, this uh, description says very few things about arithmetic properties of a Galois group. For example, uh, we have all very partial information about the ramification filtration of GK. And uh, the, uh, the approach by elliptic representations in some sense linearize the problem. So instead of to uh, consider some uh, complicated group, we consider the category of its uh, representations, which uh, have some linear structure. So the linearization, some sense linearization of a problem. Um, <clears throat> so uh, let uh, denote by rep GK the category of uh, QL representations, uh, adic representations of GK. And uh, this is a abelian category. Uh, this is a tensor category. And uh, uh, the tensor product satisfies many uh, properties, which is easy to write down. But there are so many properties which I cannot uh, overview all of them, but they can be summarized in a very abstract uh, way, saying this is a Tanakian neutral category. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, we also, we have uh, the category of uh, Integral elliptic representations, representations uh, the, given by free z L modulus. Equipped with uh, Galois action. And we have a natural function from this category to that one, which is the tensor product so the extension of scalars from ZP to QL. And uh, uh, this remark, provides remarks, just says that this function is essentially subjective. So let now uh, uh, consider the case of uh, local fields. So from now, K is a local field. So we have uh, two cases. So we have the characteristic, uh, non-zero characteristic case. It denotes the characteristic by P, uh, and in this case, K is uh, isomorphic to the field of a run series with coefficients in a finite field, and uh, uh, the zero characteristic case where uh, K is a finite extension of a periodic uh, field QP. So in both cases, we have the following uh, tower of extensions. So if we want to approach to the algebraic closure or the separable closure of K, we can start with, by taking its maximal unramified extension. Uh, the Galois group of this extension is easy to describe. The procyclic group generated by Frobenius. Next, we can take the 
maximal tamely ramified extension. Tamely ramified extension is generated over the maximal ramified extension by adjoining all roads of um, so let's fix a uniformizer of uh, p of k in the both cases and we adjoin uh, uh, roots of order prime to P of uh, the uniformizer. Okay. So uh, this Galois group is isomorphic to the direct sum, sorry, direct product direct product over all the prime Q different from P over copies of ZQ. And here we go to K bar and uh, the Galois group of K bar over uh, the uh, maximum time ramified extension is so called wild ramification group. This is pro, L, uh, pro P group. Sorry? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So this is the inertia group, and here we have the Volga law group. Okay. So uh, let's now consider the case of different characteristics, where L is different from the uh, residue characteristic of K. So, uh, in this case, uh, let's consider the following function TK defined on the inertia, the whole inertia subgroup of K with values in L. So it is given by the following formula. So if uh, an element of uh, the inertia group acts on uh, uh, Lm fruits of a uniformizer, so this can be written in the following form. Here we fix some uh, uh, Lm uh, root uh, of unity. And uh, this gives a well-defined homomorphism Tk. Yes, thank you. And uh, uh, sure that uh, this factors for the uh, wild ramification when we have the following uh, theorem. Grotten Dick Monodromy theorem. So 
Covid says that uh, in this uh, uh, context, if uh, V is an uh, elliptic representation of GK, where L is different from P, then there exists an open subgroup U of uh, the wall inertia subgroup. And uh, a nilpotent operator N on V. Such that on U the uh, elliptic representation can be written as uh, the exponent of. Uh, G and so uh, the idea of a proof uh, is uh, very simple because uh, if L is different from P, uh, the restriction of uh, representation and the inertia and the wild inertia group factors uh, through a finite quotient because L is different from P and uh, this map should be continuous and p adic topology is not compatible with l adic topology. So uh, choosing uh, some open subgroup U of uh, the inertia group, we can uh, trivialize the action of uh, wild uh, ramification on uh, the periodic rep and elliptic representation. So we need only to consider the action of a maximal tame, uh, tame um, extension. And uh, in the tame, uh, in the Galo group, the Galo group of a tame extension is easy to describe. And uh, we have a uh, uh, first of all, the lift of Frobenius operator, uh, subgroup, uh, so, okay, so I will write it down. So we have a following exact sequence, tautological exact sequence. The Galois group, the black, uh, ah, this one, oh, thank you. The Galois group of a uh, uh, extension over an ramified extension. The Galois group of a uh, team uh, ramified extension over K. And uh, the Galois group of a uh, maximal unramified extension which is uh, generated by the Frobenius. Okay, we can lift this Frobenius arbitrary here, so I denote again this lift uh, by the same uh, character. And uh, 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 here we have a, so we'll take some element G, and uh, when we can write the relation between a G and uh, the lift of Frobenius, which says that this composition is uh, uh, equal to the composition of a Frobenius, uh, sorry, 
g at uh, tk of g uh, Frobenius and uh, if we define uh, the operator n by this formula so we have the following relation between the Frobenius and uh, the monodromy uh, sorry I said something stupid g at uh, Q where Q is the residue, the order of a residue field. And uh, uh, yeah, and uh, uh, from uh, the definition of N, we have uh, the following relation between the Fabinius and monodromy. And uh, this implies in particular that and is inipotent. So uh, one of uh, uh, important problems of the periodic code theory was uh, to find an analog of this theorem when L is equal to P. So now we switch to this situation uh, from now we'll talk about periodic representations and assume that L is equal to P. It's defined by this formula. When U is sufficiently small, you can take the logarithm of G and define uh, N by this formula. Yeah, and uh, the problem is to find, uh, to show that N is nilpotent, but this follows from this relation. Because if you look at the eigenvalues of n, you see that they are all zero because of this relation. Okay, uh, now let's uh, assume that L is equal to P. Uh, and first uh, consider the case of uh, fields of characteristic P. So uh, here it is not so much important to assume that K is a local field. So the same theory will work for all fields of characteristic P. So uh, let's uh, first pass to uh, radical closure of K. in order to get a perfect field. So uh, the Galois group of K is, and F Galois groups are isomorphic. So we can instead K to study periodic representations over F. Let's denote by OE, so this is some standard notation of a theory, the ring of uh, with vectors with coefficients in uh, F. So uh, for, uh, for us, uh, it is only important to know this is a complete discrete evaluation ring with maximal ideal generated by P and the residue field F And uh, we will denote by E the field of fractions of 
this ring, so it is enough, it is sufficient to invert P. Oh, uh, let uh, 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 also consider with vectors, with coefficients in uh, uh, algebraic closure of F. And uh, I will denote it by or e unramified head. And uh, by E unramified hat, the field of fractions of this ring. And just from uh, the construction from a standard properties of bit vectors, follows that this is a completion of a maximal unramified extension of E, and this is its ring of integers. So we have two structures uh, on these objects. So first, uh, uh, we have a the action, continuous action of the Galois group of F. And the invariants are exactly the uh, elements of E. And uh, also we have a Frobenius operator on F bar, which induces uh, Frobenius on uh, with vectors. So we have uh, two structures. So now we define uh, the notion of a phi module and of a tal phi module, which is uh, uh, quite important, uh, at least for this course. It is uh, important for uh, for the whole theory. Uh, so a phi module. <coughs> over OE, respectively over E, is a finitely generated free OE module, respectively E vector space of finite dimension. Uh, equipped uh, with uh, a semilinear operator so let denote this module by D Linear operator D. And uh, 
we will say that uh, phi module is et al. So maybe here I will uh, immediately assume that phi is subjective. Even isomorphism. Uh, no, not isomorphism, it is not good, no, not sorry. Okay, no, let's, let's uh, for a moment, uh, let's uh, keep this definition. So, uh, uh, phi, um, phi module D is a tall, if and uh, only if, uh, uh, so it, its matrix is invertible. Over OE, respectively in E. Or equivalently, if uh, we consider the map from D tensor or E, or E with respect to the map phi, where this notation uh, says that we consider or E as a module or over itself via this map. And uh, consider the map from this tensor product to D given by the following formula. Is an isomorphism. <coughs> so uh, later we will relate this with uh, uh, the theory of slopes, but for uh, to state the uh, next uh, theorem, this description sufficient. Uh, and uh, for uh, E, this is the same, the definition is the same, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we have a category of all phi modulus, say over OE, and uh, the subcategory of et al. Phi modulus, and uh, for us it is important that this category is abelian tensor category. So it says an easy uh, statement. So uh, maybe I want uh, I will uh, comment uh, this definition. Uh, the definition of uh, etalness, which uh, will also explain the proof of, uh, uh, of the next theorem. So, remark. So, assume that D is an etal module over OE, and uh, consider its reduction mod P. So this is a phi module So if we quotient with uh, the ring of fit vectors by P, we get F. So this is a phi module over the vector space F. So let's take a basis E1, E2, ED of M. 
and let's uh, write the action of uh, phi in this basis. The coefficients are in F. Then we can consider the following algebra over F. So we take the quotient of uh, this uh, polynomial ring by uh, the ideal uh, generated by all uh, the, the family of elements. For all i, And uh, uh, just from uh, the etalness of phi, it follows that this is an etal F algebra. And uh, also that if we are interested in uh, the homomorphisms over F from M, to the algebraic closure of F. We consider only homomorphisms fixed by the Frobenius. Then this is exactly the set of homomorphisms of this algebra uh, to uh, F bar. And uh, in particular, because A is a tall, we see that this object is a FP vector space of dimension D equal to the rank of a uh, phi model. So uh, now uh, we can state the classification theorem, giving some description of periodic representations in uh, the characteristic P case. Uh, in uh, Fontaine's uh, paper in Grotendieck Festschrift, but I think that it may be not in this form, it was known, it had been known uh, before, but so I don't know. Uh, uh, consider the following. Uh, Functors from, say, uh, functor D from the category of uh, periodic representations, uh, so integral periodic representations of GK. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, but you can, you can, can compute the determinant. Uh, so the, the that's also this is a criterion of vitalness yeah, in terms of differential forms. So, it's, uh, so we consider the uh, functor D to the category of uh, uh, et al. phi modulus over OE, it is not automatic, but it will be, it, it is a part of a proof to show that this function is, uh, indeed gives an etal module. So we start with uh, 
Epiadic representation, say T, or say okay, V, uh, we take its uh, tensor product over ZP with uh, or E unramified head, and uh, we take the Galois invariance of the tensor product. So uh, this is an OE module because the OE is invariant, uh, is stable under the action, uh, is fixed by GK. Uh, and uh, the functor V or E from the category of a tal modulus to the category of periodic representations. Again, one should check that we get a periodic representation. Uh, uh, given by the following receipt, we start with a tal module D. We take a tensor product over OE with or E unramified, and uh, we take uh, the invariance under the action of a Frobenius. So automatically, uh, we see that this is a ZP module. Point is that it has uh, the same dimension of a rank of D more uh, explicitly, so if we consider these two functors, then uh, D or E and uh, V or E are equivalences of uh, categories, quasi inverse to each other. So, uh, first of all, one can uh, reduce uh, this theorem to the state, to the same statement mod p. So, we can consider uh, representations over the finite field uh, or fp. When uh, our construction mod p gives the following, so when we go from periodic representations to uh, phi modulus, we take the tensor product of v over fp with uh, the algebraic closure of f. We take Galois invariance and, uh, uh, in fact, we can show that if we take Galois invariance and next, so this is a F vector space. And uh, next, we extend scalars to F bar when it is canonically isomorphic to V tensor F bar over FP. And this is, uh, this follows from uh, Hilbert 90 theorem, which says that H1 of GF with coefficients in GLD F bar is trivial. So we have a vector space with a similar action of a Galois group. We can always find a 
invariant basis. So this explains why this map is an isomorphism. So this is our D mod P, and uh, we recover V. So this isomorphism implies that Uh, the composition in, uh, of D and V in this uh, order is uh, quasi-isomorphic to the identity functor. Uh, conversely, if we start with a phi, mo uh, phi module, M is a phi module. Again, consider the situation mod P, so over, this is a phi module over F. We should check that if we take the tensor product of M with F bar over, uh, over F, take invariance on the Frobenius, then after extending scalars to F bar, we recover M tensor F bar over F. And uh, uh, we should show, sorry, Uh, yeah, thank you. So uh, uh, the key point is to show that this uh, uh, vector space of is invariance of invariance is a of dimension equal to the rank of M. And this follows from this property. So here we consider Holmes, but we can pass to dual object, use duality, uh, and uh, uh, to prove that this is a vector space of a good dimension. So this uh, vector spaces are of the same dimension, and we only need to show that this map is injective. And uh, the injectivity follows from a standard argument uh, known as Artin streak. So, uh, Morally, we assume that uh, the kernel is non-zero, and we, in the kernel, we choose uh, an element of, uh, um, of uh, smallest uh, length. And uh, we show that it can be reduced to a smaller element, and this gives a contradiction. So, okay, uh, now, uh, we pass to the main, uh, so from now, K is a complete discrete valuation field. Uh, of characteristic zero. with perfect residue field. Say small k of characteristic P 
and we consider periodic representations. So consider the category of periodic representations of GK. In principle, no. no. But it should be perfect. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. So this is a long story and maybe initiated by uh, Tate in the 60s. And uh, next, uh, the, uh, in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, Fontaine developed a general approach how to classify these representations by using uh, different ideas, so using several appro different approaches, and studied uh, the links between uh, these different approaches, which uh, uh, culminated uh, at the end of the uh, 90s uh, with a proof of a uh, the main conjectures uh, of Fontaine theory. Uh, but uh, for a moment, let's just uh, dis uh, discuss uh, how we can uh, describe this uh, category. Yes, sure. So they take a discrete relation field with a residue field of field of functions of one variable. Yes, yes, yeah. So roughly speaking, you extract some non-perfect field in the field of width vectors over F, for example. Uh, okay, so uh, let's consider the context uh, of a previous uh, lecture. Take uh, a simple, infinite, totally ramified extension of K. For example, it's a uh, Periodic cycloatomic extension. So we have a Wall Galois group and uh, this uh, group HK here and uh, a simple extension. Let's denote by gamma its Galois group which in any case is a subgroup of Zp star. So, then by fontaine Wittenberger theorem or in a more uh, modern language uh, using the theory of perfect rates and the uh, last theorem of the previous lecture, uh, we can say that uh, uh, if we consider, we can consider the tilting uh, tilt of k infinity, completed k infinity. Here we have uh, the uh, tilt of uh, let denote by c. Uh, the completion of the algebraic closure of K. Uh, we can take the uh, tilt of C, which is algebraically closed. So here we have uh, the maximal algebraic extension, algebraic closure of uh, K hat tilt. And this Galois group, this Galois group is uh, isomorphic to HK. Uh, 
So if uh, we have a periodic representation of, sorry? Here? Uh, this is algebraic closure of uh, this field, yeah. Sorry, again. Uh, I don't understand. This one and that one? This two things? No. So, so we take the completion of k-infinity, yeah? We take the completion of k-infinity. This is a perfectoid space. We take the tilt of it. Here. Ah, sorry. <laughs> So it's so stupid that, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah sure, yeah. Because we have uh, this field of characteristic P, which is a tilt of uh, cyclotomic extension, yeah? And here we take uh, the algebraic closure of this field of characteristic P, which lives inside the tilt of C. And it is dense here, but... Well, this is a tilt construction applied. So we are exactly in the context of a previous lecture. <laughs> so we have uh, two perfectoids, K infinity uh, completed and uh, uh, C. Yeah, so we take uh, the corresponding fields of characteristic P. So this is a complete algebraic closure field. So therefore, the algebraic closure of a, tilting, a tilt of k infinity lives inside. Yeah? But it is not the same thing, because this field is not complete, and this one is complete. But this is a completion of this one. Yeah. 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 OK. So uh, now, if uh, we have a periodic representation of GK, say V. So the restriction of uh, this representation on uh, uh, HK can be viewed as a representation of a local field of characteristic P of K infinity, uh, tilt of K infinity. Or, because we can decomplete the situation. Uh, okay, so it doesn't matter. Okay. Or, or the field, uh, or the Galois group of this field, or the Galois group, or the field of characteristic P. So, yeah, yeah, I finish in two minutes, maybe in one. So, uh, there is, therefore, the restriction uh, of uh, rho 
on HK can be uh, classified using the previous theorem because we can view it as a representation of a Galois group of a field of characteristic P. But we lose the action of gamma. So we should recover it some way. So this gives rise to the theory of uh, et al phi modulus with an extra action of gamma. So this is a Fontaine's theory phi gamma modulus. So uh, this is an important theory, but uh, in uh, uh, the next uh, lectures, I will uh, mainly um, describe the more classical, the first uh, approach of Fontaine uh, using uh, periodic uh, rings, B crease and B deram. And from this point of view, can, it can be seen as the following uh, idea. So we want to encode the action of gamma in, in other structures. So we should consider phi modulus, et al phi modulus, uh, in some sense, but replace gamma by some structures like, uh, for example, filtration. And uh, yeah, I will explain it more detail uh, tomorrow. So thank you, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Yeah. Will you consider representation of our finite attention of QP? Oh, so more or less this is the same. So parallel theory, yeah. Right, we right. can take extensions, yeah. Oh. Yeah. But Are for simplicity, so it can be done, but for simplicity I consider only okay. this coefficients, yeah. So here, because we're going to have a lot of questions about the second field and the top field. There is, is it some commuting that completion commutes with tilting or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in some sense, uh, for formally, uh, we apply tilt, tilt to complete objects. Yeah. yeah. So you tilt and you complete. That's the same as completing and tilting. No. 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 So we apply tilt to complete oh. fields. Yeah. Right, yeah. no, but then you said that the top field, so that's still confusing me. So the top mm -hmm. field, you said to go from the middle field to the top field, you complete. Yes. So what do you mean by that? Oh, because... So oh, it is still... Uh, this is, uh, yeah. This it's is not it. a perfectoid, so the one middle, the one in the middle this is not perfectoid. No. Okay, so you complete to get yeah. a perfectoid. Yeah. 